So no, this isn't the new studio. I'm gonna take you up there in a moment. I'm just in my new office, as it were, as I said in the last vlog about getting the garden furniture. I do like working out in the garden when I can. Today's actually a bank holiday here in the UK, uh, which means it should be a public holiday. But because I wanna to spend tomorrow with the kids and, and kind of doing, I need to catch up on stuff. So today I'm doing a vlog with you guys, but I am mostly trying to catch up with effectively 12 weeks worth of missed admin and emails and just stuff that I've not done for so long. What a better place to do it in the garden. Now one of the things I need in the studio is a way of recording and I found this in my kind of, not junk box, but kind of stuff that I hadn't gone through since I got moved. It's my old audio interface, my Audio Fire 4 by Echo. The thing is, I've no idea where the power unit is for it and whether I can run Firewire to USB-C. At least at three, that USB-C. So it's time to break out the box that came with me from the old house and the house before that of wires. Lockdown hair is doing my head in. Anyway, it's nice. <laughs> so this is gonna be my new space. I need to figure out how to get the lights working in exactly the right way. Cause I'm definitely casting a shadow right now. Maybe I need to get a ring light like a proper YouTuber. Maybe that's the next thing on the list. But one of the things I wanted to do was to try and create a space which is just a recording space because downstairs is kind of like my teaching space, a little bit of living space my playing space and to be honest I've not really had a creative space where I can make music I've done a few YouTube videos for you guys but more and more during this lockdown people are wanting me to record videos you'll be seeing uh, some from people like Sios and I did myself and the Jazz Vespers team and I need a space where I can record and not kind of have the lights and everything in the cameras and have them in a room and basically uh, this is our fourth bedroom and it was my room when I first moved in. I've now moved to the loft and I was kind of having this discussion internally with myself as to whether I made the loft my workspace or whether I made uh, the loft my bedroom. The loft has one as the bedroom but this is now going to be my new space. This is where you're going to be seeing a lot of my YouTube videos from here. Although I'm not the first YouTubers to actually make a video in here. Hi guys, welcome back to Gay Boy Lewis and Girl Girl Amy Co I'm sure most of you are not really interested in Roblox and all those other games that the kids are doing, but it's great to try and encourage their creativity. So what am I gonna do in here? Well, this I've got this lovely new desk that you can see on the, uh, the slow shot from the camera. Um, this, I picked this desk up, it's like a converted crate with a, a glass top on it. It's really, really nice. My idea is, is that I'm gonna do most of my creative work, my playing, my practicing, some of my writing up here with the laptop and just kind of, or my iPad, and just kind of work in here and do the videos for you guys, do video lessons with Cambridge Saxophone in here. I'm deciding I'm gonna to put together a plan, a practice plan involving the practice planners, which you can watch about here. Gonna give you a discount on those because they're gonna be a year out, but they're still gonna work. Working through the Cambridge Saxophone website, you know, kind of lockdown keeps going. There's kind of more and more stuff and there's stuff I wish I'd harnessed at the time, but I didn't, you know, mainly for having to look after the children full time. So 
This studio is going to take shape over the next couple of weeks. I've got waiting for some stuff to arrive for Amazon today so I can uh, put some uh, dispersion tiles behind you guys. And this has got to be the new space that you guys are going to see. And I'm going to try and work on improving some of the decor, but trying to get it sounding good. And uh, that's going to be my main thing. It's going to be more like my soundstage because you guys helped me reach 10,000 YouTube subscribers as soon as lockdown came in and YouTube space in London is not open so I can't get in there and make some of the videos that I wanted to do but it's nice to have a space which is just here and just here to play in. compromises I've always had to make is the studio I've normally recorded in has always been a teaching room and in the teaching room we don't want it to sound too dead otherwise it can easily put students off that's why when I was talking about in this vlog about setting up a practice room you don't want to have the room you're practicing in too dead too soundproofed because the saxophone sounds better with a bit of reverb on it so you can hear yourself back but when you're in a recording situation you actually want it to be as dead as possible because then you can add everything else in later now that's when you're recording pop music or or tracks, you know, kind of soul band tracks. Actually, if you're recording jazz, it's better to record it all in one room. I still believe that's true. Um, you know, so, but this room is not really for recording jazz, it's for recording bits and bobs of jazz, but for the vast majority of things, it's gonna be for recording saxophone, this is Cambridge saxophone, obviously vlogs for you guys on YouTube, some stuff for Patreon, all that sort of stuff. And to be fair, I actually needed to be quite dead. One thing I can't find though, is a Firewire to USB-C wire. I don't think it actually exists. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about recording things. So what helps deaden the sound out are these uh, panels. These are just a wooden frame. Um, my dad made them for me years ago. Wooden frame with rock wool, uh, you know, what you use for loft insulation. Covered it over with uh, a nice fabric soft, uh, fabric softener? Fabric, anyway. Uh, and then you have a similar thing behind uh, the audio, which I'll turn this light off so it doesn't look as bad. Um, which way if we go that way around? I might see it that way around, it might be easier. Uh, you've got these bass traps. Um, these are kind of just a bigger version of those. Big frame, full of rock wall. There's loads and loads of videos probably knocking about on YouTube which help you with it. These are not, a lot of people think these tiles here and up there are sound insulation tiles. They're not, they do nothing to insulate the sound really. These things do. These are more about dispersion and you've got to kind of tune the room, use your ears as you go, see what works. Um, I kind of like a little bit round about 1000k something like that that just sort of comes back to me a little bit but the most important to right thing is to try and stop round about 750 hertz that is the killer sound it makes it sound like a saxophone like a duck so I'm always trying to work on that sound I'm trying to kill that in the room and just just experiment around with it it's gonna take a little while to get this room exactly as I want it but already I'm happier with it and yeah I'm just loving the fact that I've got a creative space that isn't an area that I'm walking through all the time and I might do some teaching up here I probably won't I'll try and do most of my teaching downstairs so even if it is all on Skype uh, but if up here will be YouTube videos uh, Cambridge saxophone lessons just have a break and especially during this period of still in lockdown what day are we 56 or something else like that to be able to have this an area where I can go and do all the bits of work is just great and practice as well it's something I'm really looking forward to doing If you haven't heard already, we got this sad news this morning that the great Jimmy Cobb had passed away last night. That makes everyone who was on Kind of Blue has passed away 61 years after it was recorded. And Jimmy Cobb is not just on Kind of Blue, he's on a hell of a lot of re recordings. And one of the great pleasures I had this afternoon was compiling a Jimmy Cobb playlist, which will now be on my Patreon. All you need to do is pay $2 a month and you can be one of my Patreons. I've got 23, I think lockdown playlists on Patreon now so you can head over there you can have a listen and you can enjoy this Jimmy Cobb one amongst others that's just like a Stan Getz on the session playlist so Stan Getz as a sideman, Joshua Roman as a sideman, Bramford, Michael Brecker there's loads of playlists on there even like a string quartet playlist some choral music all sorts of different stuff that you hopefully will enjoy and just get you through this play uh, this lockdown time with these playlists so yeah um, 
great shape. Never heard Jimmy Cobb myself play live, but certainly appreciate his recordings. And one of the things I was doing with students this week, uh, just gone actually on Saturday, I was talking about Kind of Blue and talking about how understated he is on that record. How he just kind of plays, it just doesn't overplay. Everything is there. He can, he can play, there's no doubt about it. He can swing like the best of them, but there is just this beautiful understatedness about his playing which just lends itself to the whole recording so i'm going to be listening to that as i head off now and go and do my uh, exercise for the day a nice socially distant walk uh, but thank you very much for watching i'm going to be doing some new videos in the studio uh, in the upcoming weeks and so i hope you'll stay tuned i hope you'll give me a like and i hope you'll subscribe i'll see you really soon bye bye